everyone, this is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from SacredSoulEmpowerment.com here with my new Empowered Moments video for the week of Monday, March 20th through Sunday, March 26th, 2023. For this week's Empowered Moments video, we're going to be using the Syrian Starseed Tarot by Patricia Corey and Alyssa Bartha for the main message for everyone. And your special message card this week, depending on your stone of choice, will be coming from the Gateway of Light Activation Oracle Deck by Kyle Gray. This is a really important week as we're moving into the spring equinox here in the Northern Hemisphere, a time of new beginnings. So before we get into the astrology, or even before that, your stones of choice, let's go ahead and do an empowered moment. So if you can close your eyes, relax your body, clear your mind of all thoughts, making sure your feet are flat on the floor with your legs uncrossed so the energies have a free flow up through Earth Mother Gaia. Sitting with your spine straight, imagining that you're opening your crown chakra to the higher dimensional energies, the higher realms, so that it can flow through your crown chakra and down through all of your chakras, down through the soles of your feet, the clear path to Earth Mother Gaia herself, and that, and that energy is returned, that nurturing energy from Earth Mother Gaia, returned up through the soles of your feet and up through all of your chakras come out the crown chakra and connect with the divine source. So as above, so below. And visualize now that you're surrounded in golden white light. Golden white light of unconditional love, compassion, guidance, protection, and healing. The golden white light of universe, source God, great spirit, all that is. And let's take in a deep conscious breath of that golden white light and breathe it into every cell of your body. And as you exhale, letting go of all that your body, mind, and soul no longer needs. And focusing on the idea, the intention, the energy of the spring equinox here in the Northern Hemisphere of course, we know that those of you in the Southern Hemisphere are having your fall equinox. <clears throat> but either way, this is a time when the sun moves into Aries, the first sign of the zodiac. A time that indicates new inspiration, new paths, new opportunities, new forward movement, an activation of that fiery, passionate sign of the ram. So what are your intentions in this new astrological year, in this time of the equinox? What do you want to create? What do you want to manifest or move towards in the weeks to come? Where do you feel passionate in your life? Where do you feel confident in yourself? Or where do you lack self-confidence and where you might need further healing to take place? Aries is the sign of leadership and courage. It is the sign of that take charge energy, new beginnings. So focus on whatever intentions you have for new beginnings. Perhaps it's in your health and wellness. Perhaps it's in your job or career. Perhaps it's in your relationships and partnerships. 
or perhaps it's within your sense of self and your individuality and self-identity. Wherever it is that you would like to initiate new beginnings, send that out to the universe as a positive intention, fueling it with that fiery, passionate energy of Aries. Breathe in those intentions Breathe in the idea of new beginnings and new possibilities. Breathe in the energy of being energized and revitalized and rebirthed within yourself. And as you exhale, releasing all that your body, mind, and soul no longer needs to carry as we move into this new cycle. And when you're ready and in your own time, you can open your eyes and return to this time and place, this space. Get ready to look at our stones of choice for this week. All right, so the first stone of choice. These are special intention pendants, no surprise. This is Moldavite, beautiful piece of green Moldavite. And this is a mystical stone powerful stone wrapped in silver and given Reiki with the vibration of master number 33, number of Christ consciousness, unconditional love, compassion, and self-healing. It has infused into it the energies of the outer planets, Pluto, Neptune, and Uranus to bring transformation, heightened psychic senses, and connection to higher dimensional energies and the God mind. The opening of the crown chakra, third eye, and heart chakra to align the higher mind, higher vision, and higher heart, and a connection to our star brothers and sisters of the highest vibration of light. This Moldavite is the only stone known of extraterrestrial origin and associated with the star card in the tarot, which is about renewed hope, faith, and blessings for the future. And our second stone of choice, is a beautiful piece of raw azurite. I had one a few weeks ago that I showed you that had a little bit of malachite in it, but that one is sold. So we found another piece here. And this beautiful azurite is wrapped in gold wire and Reiki charged with the vibration of master number 11, number of psychic vision, clairvoyance, clairaudience, and the energy of the light worker and the number eight the number of leadership, prosperity, and abundance. This one has the qualities of Neptune, planet of other dimensions and connection to past lives, planet Jupiter, planet of expansion and blessings, the element of water, which rules intuition, clairsentience and fluidity, the element earth, which rules focus and manifestation, Sacred priestess energies are infused into this, which are about the mystery and ceremonial magic, and they are the guardians of the secret teachings. And also Archangel Raziel, Archangel of Divine Magic and Alchemy. All right, and then our last stone of choice. This is Celestite. This is a nice piece of Celestite, actually. And this is wrapped in silver wire and Reiki charge with the vibration of master number 11, number of the light workers, psychic insights and perceptions. Planet Neptune, it seems like Neptune is in all three of these today. Neptune, ruler of the spiritual realm, dreams and clairvoyance. The energies of the sign of Pisces are reiki into this for creativity, imagination and visions. The water element for increased intuition and empathy. This is infused with the energy of Major Arcana, the priestess for mystery, magic, and divine feminine power, and Archangel Raziel's energy, Archangel of increased psychic abilities, alchemy, and connecting to all of those of the angelic realm. So again, our stones of choice are Moldavite, 
azurite or celestite. Okay, let's put those over here so we can make some room for everything else that's going on here. So let's talk about the astrological energies for the week. This is a huge week. We've had that other huge week where we had that full moon in Virgo and then Saturn moving into Pisces. That was a couple of weeks ago. But this week, again, we start out on Monday the 20th of March with the sun moving into Aries, the first sign of the zodiac. And the sun will be in Aries until April 20th, so a good solid full month of that energy of new beginnings, initiation, leadership, confidence, courage, new potential. And then the very next day, Tuesday, the 21st, is when we have a new moon in Aries. And the new moon in Aries is at zero degrees Aries. The sun is still in that zero degree point the next day on Tuesday when we have this new moon. So this is a true new beginning. I would say if you're going to do some sort of a ceremony, you could either do it both days, Monday and Tuesday, or I would, if you're going to just do one, I would almost wait until Tuesday when we actually have that new moon at zero degrees of Aries. So what a sign of true new beginnings, right? Aries is the first sign of the zodiac that indicates that, but the new moon is actually at the zero degree point, that very first degree, which by the way, means that the next time we have a new moon, it's going to be at the last degree of Aries. Typically, we have a new moon in each sign of the zodiac every month, right? It's Aries, and then it goes to Taurus, and then Gemini. But because this new moon happens at zero degrees, the next new moon actually, I believe they call it a blue moon, because it stays in that same sign of Aries, but now at the last degree of Aries, the 29th degree of Aries, but that will be in about a month that we'll talk about that. So this new moon at zero degrees Aries on Tuesday connects with Mercury. So Mercury, right, has recently gone into, into Aries, leaving Pisces behind. So we're fully um, into this new cycle, right? We had Mercury moving out of Pisces and into Aries. Now we have the sun moving out of Pisces and into Aries. As of the new moon, the moon moved out of Pisces and into Aries. And this new moon connecting with Mercury, which is all about the mental realm, mind, thoughts, logic, analysis, perceptions, belief systems, communication, right? So we're activating that area. We're activating the mental body. We're activating these new visions and ideas that we have. We're activating new networking or communications or interactions with other people where we want to, again, initiate some new potential or possibility in our life. Thursday the 23rd, we still have some powerful stuff going on here because Pluto, the planet of death and rebirth, transformation and regeneration, Pluto's moving out of Capricorn and into Aquarius. And yes, this is a big deal because Pluto spends 20 some years in a sign. Now it does fluctuate a little bit. So Pluto spending its uh, years in each sign of the zodiac can fluctuate because Pluto has this elliptical kind of orbit. But as Pluto moves into Aquarius on Thursday, the 23rd of March, he's going to be in Aquarius until March of 2043, right? 2043, folks. And then it's going to dip back into Capricorn for a little bit at that point, March 2043. It dips back into Capricorn and then by September 2043, after a few months of dipping back into Capricorn, it's going to move back into Aquarius again. So this is going to be an interesting time for the collective of humanity. Pluto likes to break down things. Think of Pluto as a volcano where there's things bubbling beneath the surface. And then all of a sudden, the magma kind of explodes and bursts out of the, the mouth of the volcano, right? And causes... Um, well, causes destruction, right? So Pluto is about death and rebirth. Where, where something's ending, Pluto can bring about endings, then there's new beginnings, right? So Pluto in Aquarius is bringing endings and new beginnings in the realm of technology and scientific advancements because those are ruled by Aquarius. 
So watch and see, especially when it first enters Aquarius, we might hear some sort of news or an event that has to do with technology or advanced, you know, something advancing in, in the medical field or the scientific field. Aquarius also rules humanitarian efforts. So there could be some huge transformation within humanitarian efforts out there on the planet. Now, as far as the breakdown part of it, going back to Pluto and Capricorn, where it's been for many, many years, it's it was about the breakdown or the breaking down of the patriarchal energies of society, right? Capricorn rules big business and banking and politics and, you know, authority and things of that nature. So Pluto has been over the years trying to bring about a death so that there can be a rebirth in those areas of our life. Now it's still going on, right? And because too, a little bit uh, in several years, Pluto will dip back into Capricorn. So it's going to be definitely a slow process because Pluto moves so slowly. So look for some huge um, energies in this week or maybe even into next week. And again, we're in the spring equinox, so it is about new beginnings. But watch and see what might happen out there on the collective level with this shift of Pluto into Aquarius. That, that, that desires a whole video on its own. So I might just do a, a little uh, video uh, on my YouTube channel just about Pluto and Aquarius. It's that big of a deal. Now, Saturday, the 25th, Mars. Mars is going to shift signs too. So we've got a lot of shifting going on here this week. On Saturday, the 25th, Mars, the warrior planet, planet of energy, action, and forward movement, is finally leaving Gemini, where it's been since late August of 2022. And it was in Gemini so long because of that retrograde motion that it had in the fall of 2022. So remember... Mars is passion, fire, forward movement, warrior energy, right? It wants to move forward and move forward fast, be impulsive. In Gemini, while it was in Gemini since late August of 2022, Gemini is this mutable, changeable sign. So you might have found yourselves where it was difficult to make a decision or difficult to choose a path or if you did try to make a, a decision or a choice to move forward on something it might seem like there was start stop start stop you know things going on that that veered you off in different directions and that was that gemini influence but now it's finally moving into cancer the next sign of the zodiac so from march 25th until may 20th it's going to be in cardinal cancer the word cardinal means that this sign of the zodiac is great with initiation and leadership. So we're going to be better able to initiate something and perhaps take it into follow through a lot more easily, especially after May 20th when Mars then goes into the fixed sign of Leo, which wants to see something through. Now, again, it might be a process of several weeks, but it will at least be able to make some decisions and choices and set ourselves on a path. Now, Mars is putting its energy into Cancer. That's all about home and family and community and our emotions, our emotional body, emotional reactions. And this is a sign that deals with nurturing, mothering, you know, love. It, it's really great with counseling and caretaking. So we might find that family somehow is the focus right now as Mars goes through that sign or community because sometimes our community or our spiritual community, our spiritual team, if you will, um, is our adopted family. Also on the same day Saturday, Mars at that first degree of Cancer is going to make an inconjunct to Pluto at that first degree of Aquarius. So whenever we have something at the zero degree point, and it's the same when it's at the last degree, the 29th degree of a sign, we have a magnification of its energies. Think of giving you know, birth to something. It's that birth moment here with the zero degree point. So it's kind of, it's, it's, it's raw and it's unfiltered and it's ungrounded energies, right? And so Mars in conjunct Pluto. Well, first of all, Pluto 
rules Scorpio, but in ancient astrology, Mars also rules Scorpio because before Pluto was discovered in 1930, something had to rule Scorpio and it was Mars. So we've got some very heavy duty, um, transformative, passionate uh, planets here that are coming together. So uh, I think that, again, especially we want to watch this week in the news, even in our own lives, it can definitely uh, activate something personally, depending on where it's falling in your chart. But I feel like there's something that's being activated here, a collective moment for humanity um, that might have something to do with some sort of uh, death and rebirth, transformation, change uh, regarding home, family, community, um, something that causes an emotional reaction of magnitude uh, for us as a collective. So we'll just have to wait and see what that's all about. And then on Sunday the 26th, Mercury, again, planet of the mental realm, thoughts, ideas, perceptions, communications, which is in Aries, is connecting with Chiron, the wounded healer and shaman, and the teacher too. And so here we might be able to bring healing to certain mindsets that we're holding, certain perceptions that we have. Um, perhaps there's a healing communication that takes place within ourselves. It could also be with other people, but it is in the sign of Aries, which is the sign of the self. So we might have an important, you know, kind of inner dialogue going on that brings some sort of healing to us and, and heals our sense of self-identity and confidence and independence and in who we are. Um, so a very important week going on. Now let's go ahead and see what our angels and guides have to say for this week. So again, we're using the Syrian Star Sea Tarot. We do only have three cards, so... Very interesting, because a lot of times more cards wants to fly out, flip out, etc. But let's turn over the first card and see what that is. Okay, so we've got Major Arcana. We're starting out big with Major Arcana 2. Now, in the traditional tarot, this is the Priestess card. The Priestess, I of course, Priestess is divine feminine energy, but I often think of it as also very balanced with masculine energy like the priestess is strong and magical and intuitive and psychic and and she's the seer in fact in this particular card she's holding a book which could be likened to the akashic records her own akashic records she's holding on to those uh, we've got a, a moon in the background you know the priestess kind of um, doing her ceremonial magic for the moon cycle and we do have a new moon this week now this looks like well, it could be a new moon for sure. You can see where that little bit of crescent here is highlighted. So this new moon, but I'll say up until the next full moon, which is going to be two weeks from the new moon, you want to pay attention to your psychic intuition. Your clairs might be being magnified and intensified right now. Your empathic uh, emotional energies intensified and magnified right now. Um, the higher self is what this card is called in the Syrian Star Seed Tarot. So we're connecting again to our higher self, our higher wisdom, the higher realms, perfect for connecting with our own Akashic records. Um, which, by the way, I'm, I'm taking an Akashic Records certification, so I'm really excited about that. So I'm glad to see this, and I'll be able to add that soon to my, my repertoire of what I do. But this is a powerful way to start out the week. And again, divine feminine energy. But what I was going to say is I feel like she also is so strong and confident um, in, in certain ways that she's got that divine masculine that she's balanced in. And this is major arcana too, right? So we're balancing the left and the right, the uh, as above, so below. We're balancing the two hemispheres of our brain. We're balancing the divine masculine and the divine feminine within ourselves. All right, let's see what the second card is. That's exciting. So the second card, okay. This is major arcana number 19. In this deck, it's called Solar Deity. In the traditional tarot, this is the sun card, right? The sun card traditionally is about 
success and recognition and your career or success and recognition of yourself and your own self-identity. You're shining your light because it's the sun card. Interesting though, the solar deity, and we do have that new moon in Aries, the sun moving into Aries Monday, Tuesday. So this seems like it's going to be a big deal. We have a Pegasus here in the middle of the solar deity climbing to new heights, rising to new heights, spreading her or his wings, and being more creative and expressing more confidence, more passion, and more energy towards that next step on their journey. Look at that fiery energy here. Aries is a fire sign. So we're kind of exploding into, if you will, in a positive way, this fiery, passionate, passionate, initiating, confident, courageous sort of energy here with the solar deity. So this is a big deal. So far, we've got this powerful um, priestess of psychic abilities and intuition connecting to her Akashic records and connecting to her higher self. And we're also, though, connecting with that fiery, passionate energy of our ego self, because the sun does rule the ego. But we're taking it to new heights, right? It's not the lower ego where we're vying for success and recognition. It's that higher version of the ego with the higher self involved here to where we're just raising ourselves up a notch into our own, again, confidence and believing in ourselves and knowing that we can accomplish or do anything. And we're now able to move because Mars this week is moving into a cardinal sign. We're going to be able to move forward into something new and be able to kind of stick on track, stay on track and move forward with something. We feel excited. You know, that fire energy is excitable. So we're feeling excited. We're feeling enthusiastic and we can't wait to see what comes next. All right, so far so good. Two major arcanas in a row. Let's see what the last card is. Okay, another major arcana. Powerful week, you guys. This is major arcana 14. In this, it's called alchemy in the Syrian Starseed Tarot, alchemy. In the traditional tarot, this is the hanged man. No, temperance. Sorry about that. I knew that was wrong as soon as I said it. This is the temperance card. And temperance is about having patience. There is a need for patience, right? Where we got Pluto moving into Aquarius, which is a big deal, but it's going to require some patience and time to see what transformations he brings about. And even this um, temperance card called alchemy suggests the same thing. When we When we have this process of alchemy going on, we're transforming one thing into another. We're taking like, it would be like taking two elements and putting them together to create a third element, right? Like, you know, how they would turn lead into gold or, um, you know, when we turn um, water into wine, you know, things of that nature where we're taking something and we're transforming it, we're alchemizing it, we're raising it to a higher level. Usually alchemy involves the fire process. So here again, we got lots of fire going on here with these two cards, right? The first card was more of a water sort of energy. But now we've got the fire and that makes sense. Fire, Aries, but water, Cancer, where Mars is moving into. Mars and Cancer is a water sign. So we've definitely got the elements showing up. And this is, again, to me, about transformation and regeneration. This is about transforming ourselves on a collective level. Humanity is undergoing a huge shift, right? We're alchemizing ourselves and raising ourselves to a new level um, where our, our, the vibration of our, of our cells in our body and everything about our, our lives is just moving. We're moving from third to fifth to higher dimensional levels here. And so it's interesting that we've got that temperance card, but it's called alchemy here. Um, and again, this, this transformation is taking place. I'm trying to figure out what this actually is here in the middle. Um, it could be a planet like Mars is known as the red planet, although it's moving into water sign cancer. But also when I look really closely at it, 
you see those little, like it almost looks like scales. And it reminds me, you know, of the scales of a snake or something. And snakes as a totem are all about transformation, regeneration, and death and rebirth. Pluto is about the same energy, same keywords can be applied to Pluto. And then we've got, it almost like looks at the top like it's a tuft of smoke or something. So it's like we've got the fire down here, burning away the illusions, burning away the lower vibrational energies or patterns or belief systems or things that we don't need to hold on to anymore. And it's transmuting and transforming and alchemizing into some different form here. And so this is going to be a powerful, powerful week, everyone. And I can't wait to see what happens. Now, let's go ahead and look at the Gateway of Light activation oracle cards for your special message. I thought that was a I thought it was a, a good deck of choice for this powerful week of energy. So let's just shuffle that for a minute. And then the first stone of choice was the Moldavite. So Moldavite people, special message. Special message for Moldavite. Okay. This one's calling my attention here, kind of in the middle at this point. And it says, Anunnaki light codes, okay? At the bottom, it says energetic shift. We're going through an energetic shift for Moldavite people. New information and end of a cycle. So we did just end the cycle of the Pisces energy, the last sign of the zodiac, a time of, of doing great healing and clearing and purging and transmuting. And now we're activating this new cycle and this new energy and this new information and this possible new direction here. So these light codes are bringing about an energetic shift within your being. I would definitely, Monday and Tuesday, do some sort of a ceremony, do a lot of meditation, invite in through your crown chakra these light codes to filter down and activate the cellular memory, the dormant cellular memory of, of who you really are, past lives, past gifts, um, future potential, future information, all of this can be activated. And look at the gold and the orange and even a little bit of red color in here. So that's activating those lower three chakras, right? The root chakra is the red. It's our, our stability, our security, our sense of being grounded or focused on a path. That sacral chakra, just below the belly button, the orange chakra, that's focused on our creative self-expression and feeling passion for life, passion for what we're doing. And then, of course, the yellow, which we've seen, uh, that fire element in those other cards, the solar plexus chakra, just above the belly button there, above the navel. And this is our center for personal power, confidence, courage, owning our power, reclaiming our power. It's, you know, uh, taking back our power if need be and using it in the right way, right? In the, in the right way for action to move forward. So that's a very powerful, um, positive message here. All right, for those of you that chose, we'll put that back in the deck in case somebody else gets it. For those of you that chose the Azure Rite, Azurite, special message for Azurite people. Oh, this one's sticking up. Let's pull that out. Star being healing codes. So we've got more codes of activation here. Star being healing codes. And it says, again, it says important information. Similar message to the first one. Important information, wounds are healed. So there's some past wounds or past life wounds that are being healed or have been healed the way it states. Wounds are healed and recharging, right? In that Pisces season, I love Pisces energy. It's creative, artistic, and spiritual and loving and compassionate. But sometimes we can feel a little lackluster in our energy and vitality, right? So this is that we're being recharged, right? The sun moving into fire sign Aries is recharging us. We're activating uh, a new energy within ourselves. The star being healing codes. And we've got this 
wonderful star being up here, very uh, golden yellow light. And the star being codes, it looks like it's activating not just you individually for the po people that chose Azurite, but it looks like it's activating the planet. It's activating planet Earth. It's activating humanity and Earth Mother Gaia. So this is a heavy duty activation during the equinox and Pluto moving into Aquarius for the whole planet here. So healing codes, a lot of healing going on with this one. And listening again to that information being downloaded from higher sources, right? Whether you want to say it's from the universe or God or your angels and guides or the star beings or your ancestors, this information is coming through and being downloaded for you. Let's put that back in the deck. And last but not least, we've got Celestite. Let's go ahead and shuffle the deck here. Special message for the Celestite people, Celestite. This one's calling my attention up front here. <laughs> Akashic Records. All right, you guys, Priestess holding the book, the Akashic Book of Life here, your records being accessed by yourself, right? So Akashic Records, clearing old stories, right? If we go into our own Akashic Records, we can find out what those old stories from old previous lifetimes were, and we can actually do a healing and a clearing on that level. And that will affect the present and it will affect the future, right? But past, present, future is all happening simultaneously anyway, which is why we can go back and clear those records, right? So Akashic Records, clearing old stories, releasing past lives, and freedom. Okay, so you are going through a huge karmic shift where you're being freed and liberated from those old stories, those old patterns, those old belief systems, those old karmic challenges, maybe old karmic relationships. There's a clearing going on there. And um, I'd say go ahead and try to connect with your Akashic Records. Everybody can. Anybody can learn how to do this, right? Um, there's great books out there. I wish I could remember the name of the book I'm currently reading as part of my training, but I can't, of course. Um, but there's some great books out there about giving you like certain prayers or intentions, if you will, to connect to your own Akashic records. Or simply just ask, you know, Archangel Metatron, is the Archangel that helps us to connect to our Akashic Records. So just call an Archangel Metatron and say, you know, I'd like to connect with my Akashic Records, either in my waking time or my dream time. I'd like to um, initiate a healing of old patterns. And maybe you know what the pattern or patterns are that you want to connect with to heal. Um, maybe you don't have full clarity of, of what they all are, which is okay. Just ask that you clear and heal and release what is ready to be cleared, healed, and released at this time through your records. They say when you go into your Kashuk records and do a healing like that, that it's very, very powerful. Um, and I can't wait until I can tell you all that I'm certified and able to do that. So anyway, um, I'm just looking at the card to see if I can get any other messages from the symbolism on the card here they're just to me it's just showing lots of different images like past life images different places of space and time um and it's you know it's almost like going into a meditation where you have a vision of going through a portal because here to me is like this portal where we see this portal of energy and it's taking us into one of our past lifetimes so we can go in there and see what we need to see or understand what we need to understand because not everybody can see psychically, but we can have a knowingness, we can have a feeling, we can have emotions um, or hear messages, right? Our psychic senses are all different for everybody. And so whatever it is, when you go through this portal to whatever place and time they want to take you, just ask to be taken to the right place, the right time, and to be able to initiate the, the proper clearing through the help of the archangels, the ascended masters, your ancestors of the light. Um, they're all there to help you, but you have to ask. 
All right, everybody, I hope you've enjoyed this weekly Empowered Moments video. I did. So I can't wait to see you again next week. As we move into next week, once we get there, um, it'll be going into the next month of April, too. So be on the lookout for a new monthly Empowered Moments video as well for April. If you haven't watched March or if you've already watched March, but you want to remind yourself of what that was all about, be sure to go onto my YouTube channel and watch that monthly Empowered Moments video for March. So sending you all lots of love and light for positive and new kind of successful, passionate, energetic, energizing, um, enthusiastic new beginnings. Namaste, everyone.